Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Thick Man and today we're going to end the coronavirus. If you enjoy this video, please call your dog Modest Pelican Gaming so that when you're out in public you can loudly shout its name, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Today we travel to a 5 star hotel in Thailand to foil a terrorist plot, as two extremists are planning on detonating a bioweapon somewhere in the city. Apparently it's the coronavirus and I promise I'm not just desperately linking this mission to real world events for relevancy. We'll need to blend in with the rich tourists, so naturally I dress as a clown. We'll take in with us a silenced pistol, a frag grenade and a fresh fish. Our targets are Sister Yildiz and Obek Nabazov, who you can tell is 100% a terrorist because he lives in a country east of Turkey and has a beard. Anyway, these big girls are pretending to be a self-help group which is their cover story for being in Bangkok. They've set up a seminar on the top floor of the premises. Fortunately, the agency booked us a room here, so I grab the keys from reception and follow this guy in a funny hat. Sorry, that's probably pretty disrespectful to Thai culture. The hat is great and if turned upside down, would make an excellent pot for a pot plant. Oh, look at you! You look all yeah, fancy and fun. Thanks man, that really boosts my self-esteem. I love starting off a double assassination with a warm fuzzy feeling inside. Anyway, culturally appropriate hat guy shows me my room and it's got a really nice view of the river and the good people sailing. Ships are great. There are tall ships, small ships, large ships, but most importantly, there are friendships. Alright, so it's time we check out this self-help seminar. I don't like that creepy outfit. Wow ho, try walking a mile in these big ass shoes. So sorry for bringing laughter into the world. This is just great. Now I have to murder people feeling self-conscious. The seminar is pretty interesting. It's like an affluent art exhibition had a baby with one of the PowerPoint presentations I made in year 8. I steal an amputation knife from one of the displays because obviously I'm going to use it. Amputation knife sounds hilarious. If I was actually here for self-help, as far as red flags go, I'd say this slide is a big one. Too many are afraid of death. They think it's the end, but it's not. Death is the beginning. Like seriously, self-help courses are meant to teach you to love yourself, exercise and be thankful, not embrace death. This entire seminar screams, we're about to let off a biological weapon and kill millions. Anyway, I need more intel on my targets. I stumble across this couple having a domestic dispute as the girl is ready for them to sign up to this course. The guy however is having second thoughts as he's getting a bad feeling. I guess he's the only one here who's actually reading the slides. If you go, you go without me. You coward Jeff. So his name's Jeff, which is sadly my name in real life, and us Jeffs must stick together. His girl was trying to persuade him to go back to his room and put on his weird red culty outfit, but he refused, so I follow him as maybe I can borrow it. Looks like he's staying on my level too, which is perfect. I then spot a potential thick woman for my thumbnail, but to my utter disappointment her sarong is loose fitting. When I turn around to follow Jeff into his room, the door's shut and I'm subsequently locked out. Sort of regretting bringing the fish instead of an electronic keycard hacker right now, but yeah, the booty really let old thick man down today, so now we must commence Operation Penetrate Jeff's Hotel Room. I'll need a master keycard or something, so I begin sweeping the hotel, but then remember I'm staying right next door. I attempt to climb on over, and it goes reasonably well until this soldier is like, Oi mate, what the f*** are you doing? Get down. What are soldiers even doing here? But yeah, climbing across to his room isn't an option. I continue searching, but then notice the ashtray hasn't been emptied in ages. Yes, I'm an assassin, but I'm also a valued guest here, and this lack of cleanliness will be harshly reflected in my TripAdvisor review. I try to climb again, but this time upwards. I'm again surprised by some staff members who call security, and now I'm apparently being hunted. Obviously not ideal, and now I'm sort of just stuck in my hotel room by myself, and I'm not even in the mood to cry and jerk off, or whatever normal people do in hotel rooms. There's no option to put these robes on, or take a relaxing warm bath either, so instead, I attempt to lure a guard in with the fish. This works surprisingly well, and I continue leading him in by throwing the amputation knife as well. This old school pointy helmet outfit should give me the cover I need. 
This looks perfect for when you've got to guard the hotel at 1 o'clock, but invade Cambodia with King Rama and the boys at 4. I also get my fish back, so thank god for small miracles. Operation Penetrate Jeff's Hotel Room Part 2 I still need a damn keycard, so it's time we widen our scope a little bit. Also side note, the ferns and palms in here are beautiful. Huge props to the gardeners for keeping it so lush, because indoor plants are very hard to maintain. Trust me, I'd know I recently bought like 12. I find the hotel manager who's sure to have a keycard, so now I just need to wait until she's alone. While stalking her, I hide behind this pillar, but Thick Man is simply too thick for it and she easily spots him. Wow, is it everyone's goal in here to hurt my feelings? First I'm a creep and now I'm fat? I think Agent 47 will genuinely need a self-help course after this. I'm now being hunted again and this disguise is compromised and honestly, Jeff can go f himself. There's probably a lesson here about not looking at women's booties and getting distracted or something, but I'm too alpha to learn from my mistakes. Speaking of thickness, I miss Haven Island where there were unlimited booties. What a tropical paradise. Honestly, there's no point to this cutaway. I'm just under unreasonable pressure from you legends to have thick thumbnails for every Hitman video, so yeah, we got it. I climb back up to my room, and yeah, this feels familiar. At least the guards on this floor haven't been alerted yet, and then Flat Judas exits her room again. Somehow I manage to just sneak in, and I'll take it. At least it's something. I explore her room, and it seems there's a naked man passed out on the floor who's probably been roofied. That's so cute. I find his clothes in the bathroom, and now I look like a 45 year old aspiring DJ who's overly enthusiastically spinning beats at kids birthday parties. At least I'm not compromised, and so we commence Operation Penetrate Jeff's Hotel Room Part 3, but this time with far more violence. Sometimes you've got to step back and assess the situation. Like the other day, I was in my bathroom washing my hands with soap and I thought, wow, I never fill this soap dispenser up, how does it always have so much soap in it? It turns out my girlfriend has been filling it up for all these years. So yeah, I broke up with her immediately because who knows what else she's been hiding from me. Anyway, I throw a fire extinguisher at this staff member's head and then throw my fish at the other staff member's head. Sadly though, neither of them have a keycard on them. I then spy on this guy showering for a while and take his disguise. I should now be able to freely move around the premises with the image of his naked body burned into my retinas. I also learn that there's even more soldiers out the back of the hotel, but there doesn't seem to be much else going on here. Apparently my fish can be thrown through doors, which makes me feel slightly better about bringing it over, you know, anything useful. I continue to generously apply more John Wick to the situation, but simply cannot locate a damn keycard. Finally though, I stumble across a room being cleaned. It's being cleaned by women only, which is kind of sexist, as it implies men can't clean, which we definitely can. We can clean up a game of Call of Duty. <laughs> wow, that didn't even make sense, but yeah, I find a keycard in the room, so good news there. At last, Jeff's hotel room has been penetrated. I unsheathe my amputation knife, and the guy is just sitting there on his laptop. In fact, he's working on a damn Excel spreadsheet. Jesus, way to fill the Jeff stereotype. Do you really think our name needed this? It feels wrong attacking a fellow Jeff when he's unaware. So I throw a coin to get his attention, and then when he notices my presence and looks into my eyes, I drive the knife into his stomach. There can be only one. His cultish robes are here too, and so I say goodbye and head upstairs. It's slightly concerning that I haven't actually located my targets yet, but I feel like we're moving in the right direction. I see a fellow red boy and decide to trail him. He then heads over to an open window and stares out pondering the world and life decisions. Perhaps for example the questionable life decision I make to push him out the window in an extremely public area. Not the most tactical play of my life, but it made me smile, and as the Dalai Lama once said, a simple smile is the start of opening your heart and being compassionate to others. I find the self-help ceremony, I believe. I'm starting to think this is almost certainly a cult now. The guards want to frisk me, so I'll have to ditch the weapons. It seems a shame to ditch the frag grenade I've been carrying around with me, and so instead, I toss it out the same window I threw my red buddy out of. 
If the fall didn't kill him, the dispersed shrapnel from the explosion certainly did. I head back upstairs and find both of my targets, which is convenient. Always good to know the location of who you're killing. As I'm looking for an unoccupied hotel room to ditch the rest of my weapons, the alarm is sounded and everyone begins to panic. I guess you can't throw explosives inside a hotel after all. And in fact, isn't that the exact same reason I was sent here to eliminate Sister Yelda's and Oybek? For detonating explosives in public? Needless to say, I kill quite a few, but end up getting gunned down. Wow. I reload, and this time don't push him out the window because I'm a professional. I ditch my guns in an empty bathroom, and now it's time to enter the belly of the beast. My uncle used to always do this to me when we were playing airport security. This part was way more fun than the cavity search. Alright, so I'm in. It's time to self-improve. I take the conveniently left seat up the back and wait for something interesting to happen. Stepsister Yildaz walks in with a red scarf, and actually there's a lot of red going on in here. Is this a communist fueled terror group? Commies are all about sharing and caring, but also often the ones who enjoy killing the most. It's hard to gauge where they're at. A big Oybek strolls in and starts preaching to us about death, and he's a bit of a wet blanket. He then puts his hands in the fire to, I guess, flex his pain threshold. It's probably fake fire, but I appreciate the showmanship. He then literally just asks me directly to go and have a word with him in private, and I'm just like, yeah, sure, chief, let's get out of here. This is all going so well. Far better than getting into Jeff's hotel room, that's for sure. He then starts preaching his embrace death mantra, and so I drown him in the prayer bowl, which sort of seems like bad luck. Like, am I going to be cursed for six years or always have my internet lag or something? What do you reckon's worse, being drowned in holy water or lagging ever so slightly while gaming? Hard call, but yeah, the agency then tells me that Sister Yeldez is planning on leaving the hotel. She's clearly more switched on than old mate, deciding to flee from the terrifying bald android looking malacca rather than going to a secluded place and turning her back. She's also got an escort that is no joke four soldiers, so I'll have to be cunning and tactical. I say good day to Jeff and then put back on my waiter disguise. Also just kidding, these soldiers are really bad at their job. Probably wouldn't hurt to give the head a little swivel from time to time when you know a killer's on the loose. I take the unconscious guard's disguise who I knocked out earlier. I also realise I forgot to grab my weapons from the bathroom, but I do still have the fish on me as the guards don't count it as a weapon, but I would strongly disagree. I grab a handgun from the table and roll out. Straight through a video camera, so hopefully that footage gets conveniently destroyed. It's a long shot, but I mean it worked out for whoever killed Epstein. So here's my target, she's just chilling on her phone and there's guards everywhere. She then, no joke, points her phone at me and takes a photo. It's like I'm trying to see how many times I can get recorded while carrying out this mission. I grab a propane flask and gently place it at her feet. This isn't going to be subtle, but it'll do the job. More for the sentiment of it than any other reason, I throw my fish at her head and then shoot the flask, taking her out. GG mission complete and we did really well. Zero stars, so firm handshakes for everyone. Seriously though, why so low? The only unnecessary murder was Jeff and I had every right to do that. At least the people of Thailand and a bunch of seedy middle-aged white male tourists who are visiting for <coughs> work are safe from the coronavirus. Love you legends, thanks for watching and a huge thanks to those who support the channel through Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.